So we're asked to calculate the change in exergy of propane as it's heated in a piston cylinder apparatus. So the propane is initially at 3 bar and 30 degrees C, and it fills a piston cylinder apparatus. What does that look like? It looks like here's our cylinder. There's our piston. It has some weight on it. The weight basically dictates the pressure of the gas trapped inside the piston cylinder apparatus. So this is our closed system. That's where the, that's the propane. Okay, the propane is heated until the temperature becomes 90 degrees C. So we start at state one. The temperature one is 30 degrees C. Pressure one, three bar. You go to state two, the final state, temperature two is 90 degrees C. Now, what I encourage you to do is write down all of your thermo one type of properties for this system. You could write down V1, U1, H1, S1. And do you think you could get, knowing that it's propane and the temperature one and pressure one, do you think you could get values for V1, U1, H1, and S1? Out of the tables, right? Okay, over here, you might need V1, or you might not. You might need U1, H1, and S1. After you solve a couple of these problems, you know which properties you need right away. Okay. Looking at the information, we know that the temperature 2 is 90 degrees C, but I need one more property. I need to determine one more property in order to fix the state, to jump into the tables to get the other properties. For this problem, what other property is readily determined or deduced? What's happening is this is being heated from initial, you know, during the process, you start to 1 to 2. The Q, 1 to 2, is that's heat added. So many kilojoules is going to be added. And I want to know what is the state 2. How do I, how do I fix state 2? Is it constant pressure? It is. Why is it constant pressure? Because the weight doesn't change. That's right. So basically, you have to be able to see that this is 3 bar. Now that you know it's 3 bar, then you can get the other properties. True? Uh, this is a good review of Thermo 1, but now let's jump into answering Part A. What is the heat transfer per unit mass? So we're asked to calculate lowercase q during the process from initial state 1 to final state 2, right? How would we calculate Q1 to 2? We got all these properties, U's and H's and S's and B's at our fingertips. Okay, so we write the first law. And the first law is written as U2 minus U1 plus any changes in kinetic, plus any changes in potential, which for this problem, you can see that they're negligible. It's just gas trapped. It's not propane flying in the air or propane changing elevations. Is equal to Q1 to 2 minus work 1 to 2. True? All right. So is... Is Q1 to 2 equal to U2 minus U1? I just get the value of U. Uh, why did I write 1s there and they need to be 2s? Sorry about that. That was confusing to you. Do you just get U2 minus U1? No, something's missing. Plus work 1 to 2. Is the work 1 to 2 0? I have a couple yeses, a couple noes. The work one to two is, is not zero because the volume changes. Uh, can I calculate the work one to two as the integral PDV? And the pressure comes outside that integral because it's a constant pressure. And so it's V2 minus V1. True? And so Q1 to two is equal to U2 
plus P2V2 minus U1 minus or uh, plus P1V1. Did I do the algebra right? And this U2 plus P2V2 is also known as H2, and that's also known as H1. True? So Q1 to 2 is H2 minus H1. True? So we would get our value for H's, and the difference in the H's is equal to Q1 to 2. That's the answer for part A. Yes, sir? Can you explain again why the pressure is going to be 3 bar? In this work? Well, uh, um, if I put a pin in here and held that piston in, per, in the location, and then I applied heat, what do you think the pressure is going to do to the propane? It's going to go way up. But I pull the pins out, right? Now the piston, if it becomes three bar plus a little bit, the piston will go up to maintain three bar. Put some heat, it wants to go to three bar plus a little increase in pressure, but the piston says, oh, you want to expand? Up I go a little bit. Yes, sir. Uh, or uh, somebody comes along and they say, there's a roof here, and I introduce a spring. What happens with the spring? I compress the spring as the piston rises. It's now you do a force balance on that piston, and the force balance on the piston determines, oops, with the spring now, the gas pressure increases as the piston compresses the spring and goes up. But otherwise, if there's no spring, you do a force balance on that piston, free body diagram, and then see if Z, the elevation of the piston, determines the gas pressure under the piston and the elevation does not. There's, in the free body diagram, that force balance, it's, it's irrespective of Z. Does that all make sense? So there you go, that's the answer for part A. Now, for part B, what is that change in the specific exergy? I'll put a little room down here. What we're asked to calculate is lowercase E2 minus lowercase E1, where that specific exergy, true? So is that going to be U2 minus U1 plus P0 V2 minus V1 minus T0 S2 minus S1? Is that how you calculate the change in specific exergy? It's, we don't have to use the exergy balance equation. It's just the property. I determine it from other properties. Okay. So do go ahead and get V1s and H's and all of those properties, and you'll use them all. Okay. And uh, if you would like the answer for this problem. I have that the uh, E2 minus E1 is about 3.65 kilojoules per kilogram. And uh, Q1 to 2 is 113 kilojoules per kilogram.